And uh, thank you, Sasha. Before you, you probably see the agenda. We're going to do our self introductions really quick. And then uh, hopefully, Jory, I know you've got a half hour. If Terry doesn't make it, we'll ask you to just kind of do a situation report for the County of Ventura. And then we're going to spend some time looking at what we've been uh, doing in the area of GIS. Uh, we'll give you a CPUC funding updates, talking about some last mile pilots that are in conversations that we're having. And um, do the round table. Everybody can give their reports and updates and uh, we'll be out of here by one o'clock. And for Megan's benefit, that's one o'clock Pacific. It's four o'clock your time. So uh, why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, Bill Simmons, coordinating the Broadband Consortia. Sasha, you're on my left. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself and I'll just call your names. And if you don't mind just saying where you're from, who you're with, and that would be a great place to do the introductions rather quickly. Okay, I'm Sasha Burrows. I'm with the Broadband Consortium as the Communications Associate. And then Maria's on my right. Broadband Consortium. Thanks for coming, everybody. And then Brian Chung. With the City of Moore Park. And Tim Tierney. Uh, hi, I'm Tim, and I'm doing a GIS support for the Broadband Consortium. Thank you, Tim. And then there's Julie Judd, one of my best friends. Good morning, everybody. I'm at the County Office of Education. And Greg Hayward. Good morning. I am Greg Hayward. I'm in Ventura. I'm with OB Smart, delivering last mile business intelligence. I like that tagline. Steve Weingart. I'm Steve Weingart with uh, Ridge Communications. We uh, Permit, engineer, build, maintain fiber optic networks and uh, cellular sites throughout California. Business is booming, I imagine. It is. We're pretty busy. And then there's Megan Beresford. We're just happy to have her with us. Hi, I'm Megan. I am the director of broadband programs with Learn Design Apply. We are a grant consulting company. And Dana Stroud. Hi, good afternoon. Dana Stroud, Business Development Specialist for GoBiz, uh, covering the Central Coast. Thank you, Dana. I need to reconnect with Jeff Moresic real soon. Hi, I'm Jeff Moresic, uh, CIO Santa Maria. And then, Hi, everybody. And I saw John Alasson last night. Hi, John Alasson, Public Works Director, City of Carpentria. Uh, Carpentria is a partner with Santa Barbara County Association and Governments on this broad, broadband strategic plan. Thank you for joining us, John. Rich Grasick, hi. Hello, Rich Grasick, City of Lompoc, broadband administrator here in town. Uh, generally, just like uh, John I lesson said, yeah, we're just a partner with uh, the SBCAC. And then there's Tim Williams, he's the man about town. Hi, everybody. Tim Williams with Astound Broadband, formerly Digital West. And George Amendola. Hi, good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all. George Amendola, resident of Ventura, active in the broadband discussion for many, many years with a long career in telecommunications and broadband. Now uh, doing cybersecurity consulting. Thank you. Thank you, George. Hi, Jory. Thank you for joining us. Jory Wolf. Good morning, everyone. Jory Wolf, Magellan Advisors, consulting with the County of Ventura on uh, the broadband planning uh, and grant funding. And then Danny Mia Milla. Uh, Milla. And hi, my name is Danny Milla I'm with Cox Communications. Thank you for joining us, Danny. And Brian Coleman. Hello everyone, Brian Coleman. I'm also with GoBiz. I'm the Regional Economic Recovery Coordinator for the Central Coast and I'm in San Luis Obispo. Thank you for joining us, Brian. Steven Sawyer. Hi everybody, this is Steven Sawyer, Director of Government Affairs for Charter Communications. And Lorelai Capel. Everybody, Lorelai Capel, City of Atascadero is Economic Development Director. Nice to see you all. And a good friend, Steve Kinney. 
Morning, Bill. Morning, everybody. I'm Steve Kenny. I'm a consultant with the city of Port Wanimi. I'm uh, here on the call to make sure everybody else looks smarter about broadband than me. <laughs> Steve has got a task of putting together a strategy. And uh, we told him that we'd help him get smart on broadband real fast. So, okay, did I miss anybody? I think I've got everybody. Let's run into the Ventura County update. And uh, Jory, you wanna take a swing at that? Absolutely, <clears throat> thank you, Bill. Um, I think you all know that the County of Ventura has been working on planning a broadband middle mile network. Uh, this actually uh, took place uh, prior to the state of California announcing SB 156 and approving uh, three and a quarter billion for a state open access middle mile plus um, another two billion, one billion each for rural and you know, for urban counties, as well as some loan loss reserve money for um, for um, uh, for loan funding for broadband throughout the state, and then of course uh, the lab of funding, which is coming out. Uh, sometime soon, probably the beginning of, um, of July, um, another $50 million available for um, jurisdictions throughout the state and service providers, uh, including coalitions of governments and governments um, to apply for $500,000 in grant funding for broadband planning to get ready for the last mile money uh, that SB 156 set aside for urban and rural counties which will probably be, the window for that will probably be available sometime later in the year. Um, if you haven't seen the materials, the guidelines for either LADA or for the last mile funding, uh, Bill has those available. I'm sure would be very happy to oblige you and make those guidelines available. Um, <clears throat> so we have finished the design of the Ventura County Network, and we are now focused on taking advantage of each of the grant funding opportunities as they become available. Um, and the one which is most available uh, um, uh, has run out of funding. Um, and that was EDA. Uh, and through EDA, we were gonna be going after the EEA, <clears throat> uh, which was the economic, I'm sorry, EAA, the Economic Adjustment Assistance Program. Uh, those funds will not be replenished again in, until the new fiscal year for the Fed opens sometime in October. So we'll be waiting for that, but please know we will be going after at the EAA funding uh, from EDA. We will um, now take a little bit of a redirect and we're gonna be going after the LATA funding when LATA funding comes out uh, in the beginning of July. Why? Um, when you ask, well, we've already done our planning effort. Yes, we are well along in the planning effort, but please know that LATA funding can be used for design engineering purposes and for um, other administrative tasks, which will help the county through the effort um, of uh, completing its design engineering uh, for construction bidding uh, and actual costs for the first segment, which is the segment along the 126 connecting the cities of Santa Clarita in the east and the city of Ventura uh, on the west. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, the county, uh, we'll be issuing an RFP shortly. Uh, the RFP will be for a partner or partners in which to construct uh, and participate in, in the joint build of the one uh, of the 126 route, which is what we call uh, Phase 1A. Um, <clears throat> we uh, are also working very closely with the BCTC folks, uh, Ventura County Transit Authority, um, in using um, <clears throat> their uh, North Santa Paula rail line and an easement on that rail line. So we are now in the course of conversations uh, on the easement agreement between the county and BCTC um, and moving forward um, with um, uh, a boilerplate agreement that BCTC uh, has made available. We have also seen various plans that the BCTC had already engaged upon. Uh, hiring Kimley Horn um, back about uh, seven years ago in which to complete a feasibility study of what it would take to put fiber along that easement. So we have some good reference materials um, in which to see what had been planned before, um, what restrictions and what obstacles that we need to be prepared for when we do our design engineering using the ladder funding that we expect to be able to obtain. In addition, the County of Ventura 
uh, has <clears throat> retained the firm of Learn Design Apply. Uh, we call, uh, they go by uh, LDA. Uh, on this call today is Megan Beresford, who introduced herself, the Director of Broadband <clears throat> Grant Planning uh, and, and Services from LDA, uh, who is assisting the county in applying for these three uh, programs that I mentioned, both EDA, the uh, ladder funds, and the last mile funding when that becomes available later this year. Um, there will be a meeting of city managers um, to inform them um, of the plans to go after the grant funding. Uh, there is a website that will be stood up by the County uh, of Ventura a meeting with um, Joe Sound, uh, who is the web designer there for the county this afternoon. And we will be, um, uh, the, the city, the county will be standing up a website uh, to post the various materials that are put together by a committee, uh, a grants committee that was formed made up of Brian Chong. Thank you, Brian, for all your efforts. Uh, Bill Simmons, <clears throat> uh, myself, uh, and also, I'm Megan from LDA. Um, we will be posting letters of support for various agencies to download the letters of support. We will be posting a project one pager to inform uh, all who will be completing the letters of support um, about the project. And we will be having uh, posting an email address for uh, those to return their letters of support for both elected officials, for governments, uh, for major businesses, and for stakeholder institutions. Uh, our website will then begin to collect those letters of support, um, and all of this will be used for our grant funding uh, uh, efforts for both EDA and for Last Mile. So please stay tuned. There'll be announcements on all of that. Uh, more word on that will be coming um, through the consortia and also through the county. Um, and uh, we hope that you will be able to participate and assist uh, in the effort of getting those letters of support in a timely manner. Um, that's about it for an update at this point in time, Bill. Back to you. Joy, did you see the notice that come across yesterday from NTIA concerning Middle Mile? Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you have a read on where that's coming from? And I mean, it looked like it was a due date of September. Is that something we should be jumping on related to this? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. It surprised me. It kind of was a shot, shot across the bow. I wasn't expecting it, 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 it to come across that way, but uh, we have the opportunities there. Yeah. And we've been, we're, we're still watching the federal programs very closely. Um, and there's also other programs that we may be looking into, although uh, environmental programs are also big. Please know that IIJ uh, and BEAD programming, um, there is you know, $42.5 billion that is available for broadband. But please know that uh, there is also other indirect programs that broadband can actually add value to. So please don't think that you need to only look down you know, one particular path. There are multiple paths coming out of BEAD where broadband can be funded to assist other efforts. For example, in Coachella Valley, they're using it for TCC funding, hopefully from the state in which to be able to use broadband to help in the efforts of cleaning up the air. Well, it's gonna be the biggest challenge of all of this is just trying to keep track of all the funds that are available and where, where to apply them. I mean, from the standpoint, I look at, all you friends, Julie is sitting there from an education perspective, and then John from the carpentry is there from a, a municipal perspective, and everybody's got the perspectives. And yes, there are funds and resources coming our way, and it's just which one and how do you focus on all of these things coming at us? It's it's going to be, we're going to be drinking out of a fire hose in terms of resources available, and we've got to figure out how to really target which ones are going to have the most benefit for our perspectives. As, as things come together. Yeah, and it, it's it's going to be a patchwork quilt, Bill. Um, you bring up a really very good point in that there's going to be various programs um, that, are, that are going to have slight differences in their eligibility criteria. Um, and the other thing that we all need to pay very close attention to is what else is going on in your preferred service area? This is a definition that is um, put out by the 
uh, <clears throat> by RUS uh, and, uh, uh, and, and by Reconnect uh, as well as BEAD. The preferred service area, um, please know you cannot overbuild uh, using federal funds. And so if you're going after federal funds, you need to be very well educated about um, who is applying in the service area so that you're not competing, competing with them. You need to find a good partner to partner with that has experience in operating networks. And you need to make certain that you're not um, uh, acquiring or applying for funds to, um, to, to uh, overbuild in areas where federal funds have already been used for broadband. To make it even more difficult, you'll need to take a look at RDOF as well, because RDOF funding has been awarded, even though those have not been built, RDOF needs to be included in whether or not um, federal funding has already been applied to your preferred service area. So you need to be educated, you need to have the tools available to you uh, to understand what's, what's, in, what's been done, what's in the works, um, and what is um, uh, competing uh, with your effort. Any questions for Jory? Any other comments on this particular topic before we move on to the next topic on the agenda? Um, could Hi, this is Julie. Um, Jory, could you just, maybe you did this and I mean, I heard everything you said, but it might not have sunk into my brain. So this map is gorgeous, but could you remind me what the colors mean? Oh yeah, certainly. certainly. Um, so uh, what you see in red, which is very little, is new underground build because there are no other assets in which to use to uh, lower the cost of construction. Um, the, what you see in purple is the Ventura County um, rail easement, and it is the most cost-effective method of building the network. Um, we're, in, we're less than $30 a linear foot, um, and that will be underground, but it will be plowing through that rather than having to do the typical kind of construction. And, and that's on the 126? And that is on the 126, Thank that's you. correct. Also on the 126, you'll see a dark blue, and the dark blue is, <clears throat> we're, we're still evaluating if it's gonna go underground, but there are aerial poles and we could deploy the wire, the wire, the, the wired uh, fiber services on those aerial poles uh, in the event that we can get cooperation from Southern California Edison. Um, that also reduces the cost. Um, other colors, uh, yellow is existing fiber that exists. Light blue are joint build project opportunities with water districts. Green are um, rehabbing. Uh, traffic signal interconnect conduit that is already in the ground uh, and making it ready to accept fiber that doesn't bend very well uh, as opposed to copper that's currently in those networks. Um, so you see it's a multi-pronged strategy so that everything isn't new construction underground but lowering the cost. The network was going to be about $38 million to start and we've lowered the cost to about $20 million by these types of creative efforts. Question um, regarding disaster recovery and redundancy in the case of fire and or earthquake. Um, has that been built into this stuff? Absolutely. Really good question, Julie. There are two internet points of presence or POPs that the network will connect to. Um, <clears throat> one will be uh, in, uh, well, originally in the north, it, it will be in, in the city of Santa Clarita, who is becoming, who is interested in being a partner in this effort. And Santa Clarita already has a 10 gigabit uh, connection to one Wilshire downtown. Um, we also envision having another pop in the south, um, most likely in Agoura Hills. We will have a temporary pop location, possibly um, somewhere else in Ventura prior to that. But the, the, the system, the network that you see will always be multi-homed to two internet pops for resilience during its construction. Looks like I was foreshadowing the agenda. Sorry, Maria. Thank you for that, Jory. Excuse me, Jory, I have a question, please. Please. Um, when you say that the, the, the design is complete, have you completed make ready engineering and wind loading? No, we have not. Um, we are, we are uh, hoping to get the grant. Oh, actually, we're hoping to use uh, the LADA funds in which to do that. And um, are you going to be putting out an RFP for that work? Yes. 
And that would include uh, JPA applications as well? That's correct. And are you going to be doing, um, maybe not on the 126 portion, but elsewhere in the network, uh, leased structure access applications and installations? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And, and, and that work also would go out the, uh, the, the duct proofing, the applications, uh, the butterfly drawings, all of that, that'll go out on RFP? Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Corey, may I ask a question? Oh, sure, absolutely. Go, go for it, Greg. The uh, uh, gun control bills that are being proposed have a lot of money for telehealth. Uh, is there any money in there for the last mile stuff? Um, you know, uh, that's something I haven't been following, Greg, uh, but thanks for that lead. I'll take a look. Very good. All good points. Great. Um, before we wrap up the Ventura County update, I, I just want to also give a, a shout out to Julie. She's not ready for this yet, but she and I have been talking quite routinely about last mile, you know, and, and uh, the schools in the midst of COVID, uh, we were all talking and having meetings and they were fighting fires. Let me tell you what they went through to be able to keep kids connected was phenomenal. And one of the areas that we're looking at is Nyland Acres and what the Rio School District has done with a not-for-profit to create this, uh, how would you describe it, Julie? It's, it's an entrepreneur wireless well, network. It's an it's, yes, it's an entrepreneurial opportunity to provide um, broad, to provide, to provide internet access to low-income folks who would never ever purchase um, internet because they can't afford to and it the intention is to ensure that kids at, at the Rio school district can do their homework at night there are 500 kids in the Nyland Acres area that had zero connectivity yeah and the challenge is is the rental um, properties the landlords refusing to allow any kind of installation on their properties so the school district had to get very creative to ensure that the kids can access their um, learning on their school provided devices. Uh, without the not-for-profit, I don't see how that could possibly work. And I still have serious concerns about the fact that the school district is on the financial hook and the um, management hook as an ISP for private use too. I mean, you know, the kids can use it for, school but their parents don't let's not kid ourselves the parents are using the school devices and stuff for connectivity it's a challenge yeah on a couple of levels but it is a very good very good template that we could build upon to meet yeah. needs in certain neighborhoods it's, it's really a very i don't know if safety net is the right term but it, it's a, a very good for this population, and in, in this population, they, they tend to be have multiple families in homes. They're renting the homes. They're going to maybe only they're going to be here for a period of time, and maybe even follow the crops up to Salinas, you know, in a number of months. And so, they don't want to have the long term relationships. But the kids still go to school and need right. to have service and connectivity. Right. I mean, this is a, a really interesting part of when you have internet for all. This is part of the all. You know, and we, we've got to, you know, think about that and how we're well, going to be able to exactly. reach them. And we're, we're, ha we're, ha I don't know what the right phraseology is. I haven't had enough coffee this morning. But um, we get our, most of our internet comes from Scenic, K-12 HSN. And they pay for it through the E-rate program. And the E-rate, the FCC has such restrictions on what we can do with E-rate provided internet to our schools. We can't take our internet and, and just, send it out to homes. It's not allowed. So Rio has set up a second circuit for this purpose, but it's a very expensive circuit. It's just a lot of overhead. Um, and then you've got the other social emotional issues with uh, citizens not wanting to be on the grid mm -hmm. for various reasons. Yeah. It's a challenge. So it's one that we persevere through. Yeah, it's an interesting conversation, an ongoing conversation, and we're looking for ways to take something that's been kind of uh, piloted, for lack of a better word, and, and make it more 
understood and uh, supportable. We still don't have an answer, though, to the high density populated areas like apartment buildings yeah. and um, condominium kind of um, tenancies where there's a, a dense amount of people in one location. Hotspots don't work. And if the if the apartment complex doesn't facilitate the connections to the homes and I'm thinking like La Colonia, you know, there's some places of poverty in our county that are really struggling. Yeah. So previews of coming attractions. You know, just a comment, Bill, on that. I have to give a lot of credit to the community, the Ventura Community Foundation, for the way they were able to tackle a lot of the social trust issues with the Complete Count Committee. I think they really did a, a good job, at least creating the messaging and the relatability within that messaging within those communities. So uh, maybe that's something that may help you out, Julie. Thank you, George. Moving forward to the next item on the agenda, we wanted to give you a, a sneak peek at what we've been working on related to GIS. This is up in the Santa Barbara area. This is a map that uh, we've started playing with and uh, I'll, I'll give up control of my screen and let you shim, uh, and, and introduce you to Tim Tierney. Tim is uh, has a little company called Simple Layers and uh, Santa Barbara County does not have a GIS in-house per se. Uh, the various, they have a GIS working group that I've met with, but uh, when I did, they introduced me to Tim. And Tim is who the county turns to in terms of working with the various uh, uh, portions and departments, if you will, that use GIS services, Tim's company, Simple Layers. And so as we embarked upon the Santa Barbara project, Tim came to mind immediately. We, I'd met Tim a number of years ago, but he came to mind immediately because of his unique position in the GIS space of Santa Barbara County. And so I'll let him tell you more about what he's doing for our project and just kind of give you a flyover of uh, some of the capabilities that we've been uh, working on. This is a work in process. We've just gotten started, but it's very exciting. So I'm going to, I've turned off my desktop and Tim, you're welcome to take it, take it on with yours. All right. Thank you, Bill. Uh, while that's coming up, uh, let me say that, um, uh, I've been in business doing cloud GIS uh, since 2005 and um, having done work with um, consulting firms and uh, the U.S. Navy out of Port Winini um, and some other things. And, uh, and since 2011, um, over 10 years now, I've been uh, providing GIS services to uh, the County of Santa Barbara acting as their de facto enterprise GIS uh, for the whole county, not officially, but uh, I am the, uh, or the system is the de facto uh, solution uh, in use countywide. Uh, the county is hosting, last time I looked, uh, around 300 different uh, map data layers that they've got organized into uh, about a dozen different maps. Most of those maps are internal facing, not for public consumption, uh, and but they have um, one or two well, at least one, maybe up to three, two or three maps that are public facing if you know where to look for them on the on the uh, county website. And, um, and those maps get um, many hits every single day. Um, okay, uh, Bill, do you see my screen? Bill, you there? I sure do. Okay, you see the screen? Can mm -hmm. I proceed? Okay, all right. So with that, let me show you uh, what I've been doing for Broadband Consortium in terms of uh, developing a, um, a map uh, of the consortium territory with a, a variety of data layers in it. Um, starting with uh, some layers of general context, um, consortium three county territory that we're in um, laid on top of a, a base map, then um, municipality boundaries uh, within California as well for some further context. Uh, and then also uh, coming from uh, the CPUC, let me turn off some other layers here. Um, this is a layer of uh, what the CPUC calls um, anchor institutions. 
Uh, let me get the legend on so you can see what some of these things mean. Um, okay, here we are. So a anchor institutions, uh, fire stations, police stations, schools, libraries, airports, um, and um, other facilities of those natures. Uh, character and, I, and I just did a, a classification, throwing some symbols on them to make different things stand out from each other. Uh, but beyond uh, general context, and then getting into features that are specific to what uh, broadband consortium is up to, you'll see that I've got um, a couple of families of, um, of layers here, which I can expand. And this family here that's called BB routes, broadband routes, is uh, six or seven layers uh, showing built broadband and also a proposed future broadband. I'll start with the built broadband. Um, first coming from um, Crown Castle Company, we have the Crown Castle local fiber within certain urban areas in the uh, green lines. And then we have the Crown Castle um, regional fiber shown in the red line there. Uh, and then we also have the Cal Ren in uh, also in a green line and then let me turn off the crown castle stuff so it looks better okay and there we have the and there we have the cal ren so these um lines that are in uh, the solid are built broadband now getting into proposed broadband let me turn that off let's start with uh, ventura county middle mile this would be the same uh stuff that jory was showing uh, and in fact, I, I think I worked off the same graphic uh, that he was showing on this uh, Zoom call to uh, digitize that into the map. And I used a um, dotted pattern to indicate that this is all proposed or largely proposed at least in Ventura County. Then in um, Santa Barbara County, uh, we have something that uh, they're calling the ring network, proposed ring network that is in the purple dots. And then finally, uh, we have the TPA proposed uh, broadband as well, which uh, links in a roundabout way, Ventura and Santa Barbara County and also gets up into SLO County, you know, and beyond. I didn't uh, digitize it too much outside of the territory that we're interested in, but uh, many of these data sets do go statewide, but I'm, I'm only showing what's relevant to us. And so turning all of those on together, gets us all of this. And in fact, uh, just this morning, Bill was sending me some other sources of broadband um, built and proposed that I'll be um, further adding to this map. Uh, Bill, I'll pause here for a minute if there's any uh, remarks you wanna say or any questions from the audience. Okay. My, my, yeah, my only, my only comment is this is just, uh, we're, we're, we're putting our toes in the water. We're just getting started on this and it's going to be very, very helpful as we don't, the point, one point that we want to keep making is it is not our intent to put in new fiber. What we really want to do is have, is know where the fiber exists. So we don't put in new fiber where, you know, we just want to complete the gaps. And, and, and so the ability to have something that we can talk to and say, do you go from point A to point B? If you do, great, let's talk about business. If you don't, well, we need to, and let's make an investment. And, and so without that kind of situational intelligence, with that, that kind of a tool, we can't have the conversation. And, and so this is really enabling us to, to take the conversation of middle mile. And, and then when you get down into the communities themselves, we're, we're building this with the communities in mind. They, they'll be able to, to, to look at where assets exist within the city boundaries and, and to have the same conversation locally about where their fiber exists or where they need to make investments and apply for funds and, and build out where it doesn't exist and start being able to track and manage it accordingly. So we have a, we have a starting point. We have uh, you know, a whole conversation that's unfolding with city reps about you know, the conversations that need to occur. And we have a platform by which they can start using it and working it and having the conversation. Uh, so just, this is only the, the first half. Go, you know, Tim, move forward with the, the data sets as well. 
Yeah, yes, I will. Uh, but one thing, uh, one remark I'll make, Bill, is um, if uh, if you were uh, watching your emails yesterday afternoon, you know that um, Caltrans finally released at least some of the data they've been they've spent a great deal of effort on extracting from uh, construction permits on installed broadband coming from the various uh, telecoms that um, I guess didn't want to share that with Caltrans, so they just went and pulled it out of um, the construction permits. And so that's something that we're going to have to analyze and understand what is this that they sent us and, and how do we want to add that to the map or not. But uh, OK, but the point uh, for the audience is um, we are getting at least some data through Caltrans on um, installed broadband in the ground um, being owned by um, you know, Verizon and AT&T and all the other players. Uh, they spent several months um, extracting from construction permits and digitizing into uh, fresh GIS layers. And they've, um, after promising that it was in final review for the last couple of months, they finally made a release of at least uh, the first portion of it. And uh, we just got that yesterday. So that'll be coming into the map as well. Brian, you have a question. Nope, you're muted. I don't mean to put Danny and Steve on, on on, on the spot here unexpectedly because it's, it's business, it's nothing personal, but the other two big providers that are on the call in Charter and um, Cox, you know, their data sets are also not included in here. Is there any effort to get that through other partners? We haven't, I put out the request to have conversations with them in the next couple of weeks. This this is brand new in terms of uh, its availability. And so they haven't been asked, you know, and, and so we're going to have the same conversation, show them the same kinds of things. And some people may be willing to share and, and you know, otherwise, when we start having conversations, talking about projects, we're going to come back to the tool and say, this is what we're trying to do. Do you have assets in this area? Every company is going to pick and choose a different path in terms of how to deal with this. And did either Danny or Steve want to, I'm yeah. assuming the answer used to be no, and it's still no, but does anyone have anything official? I'll, I'll take that as a, things are still the same. <laughs> Okay, I'll move on. I'll move on at this point. So uh, besides, so what I've shown you on the map so far is um, we got broadband, real broadband in the ground, solid lines, proposed broadband, dotted lines. And then we also have some uh, general context, anchor institutions, municipalities. Uh, but now, since a, um, a goal of uh, the grant money is to uh, get this broadband installed in such a way that it's serving needy communities, um, we've made an effort to, um, to understand uh, where that need is. And, and I'll be showing you some layers um, here in one second. But before I do, I want to say that um, uh, when it comes to engineering matters uh, as to where is the broadband now and where might the broadband go in the future, um, things are while that you can debate where the right place to put broadband is, it's it's an engineering thing and it's rather cut and dried. At, and because something's either going to go here, it's going to go there. But uh, when it comes to um, assessing the degree of need in a community, now you're getting the social science analysis where um, things are always going to be much more fuzzy around the edges. And and there are what we're finding is that there are um, a number of people out there or institutions that have um, made their own efforts to assess need. And we didn't want to say that we believe these guys and we're only going to accept their, their analysis and not look at anyone else's analysis, even though that would make our lives easier. Um, we're trying to get at the truth here. And that means looking at everybody's analysis. And so what we have in here is a number of data sets from a number of sources. And without making any judgment on who we might think is right or wrong at this point in time, we're just putting it all in and in our first um, pass, we're going to be looking at um, commonalities amongst um, the different assessments being made by different parties. OK, so with that, let me turn on some layers and show you some things. So I'm starting with um, things coming from the CPUC. So here's a um, data set uh, from them that's showing broadband adoption at the 
25 down, three up level with, uh, and these polygons you're seeing, these are coming from census tracts uh, with um, orange and red being the worst areas, green being pretty good, and the yellow being the very good areas. Then another, I'll turn that off for a second um, and go over to another one, also coming from CPUC. Um, their assessment of fixed consumer served status, again, at the 25-3 level. So served status here, the other layer was adoption. And, and they're, they're drawing a di distinction between ad what adoption and served. And then thirdly, from CPUC, um, this is vendor advertised rates of speed with, um, I believe it's um, blue, yeah, blue being better and purple being worse. I just did a simple two-step uh, classification here, but, but all these things, you know, oftentimes in visualizing the data, there's lots of things you could visualize for. And as an initial go, I, I'm just trying to keep things simple since this can all get very overwhelming really quickly. Uh, moving on, coming from uh, the UCLA organization, um, this is areas that they've defined as not receiving service at the 25-3 standard, uh, again, using um, census polygons as their geographic base. Um, this next layer, this is coming from um, Santa Barbara CAG, SB CAG, um, some polygons, again, using um, census as um, what they've defined as environmental justice communities. So communities that are not getting all the environmental justice uh, they deserve, um, according to a number of um, criteria. This particular data set came along with like a 40 page PDF report explaining all their analyses. But, but again, for visualizing it, uh, I'm just going for the bottom line here where red are the worst areas and white is um, not so bad as red. Um, Moving on again, disadvantaged zones. Uh, this, this one's coming from uh, the California State GIS Library, which is called KSIL. Um, and they have hundreds of data sets on a variety of topics. And so just um, looking through there for anything that might be relevant, I saw this pertain to disadvantaged communities. So I, so I dropped it in. And again, this is, this is just a yes, no. If it's, if it's yes, if it meets their criteria for being disadvantaged, you see a polygon. If you don't see anything, if it's just clear, then you're not disadvantaged according to their criteria. Um, and here's yet another one. SVI means um, social, uh, it, it's another kind of a disadvantaged assessment where uh, purple and salmon colors are the worst areas. Uh, the grays are medium and the, uh, the greens and the few yellow areas are doing uh, very well. Oh, SVI stands for Social Vulnerability Index in this particular case. Moving on, uh, this set of uh, polygons going across the three counties, these are related to um, zip, code, zip code polygons. And this is a series of studies that uh, the Broadband Consortium paid a uh, professor at Cal Lutheran uh, to do, where, um, where again, this came along with um, a series of reports. And so we're just, look, we're just kind of skimming the surface here of all the data that, that was in the reports. And what I pulled from that is um, absolute numbers of households that can that are designated as not being able to afford um, modern standards of um, internet connectivity. Uh, and so if, um, if you're not seeing any polygons, that means that the absolute numbers are less than 1,000 households uh, per area. If you're between 1,000 and 4,000 households, then you're orange. And if you're over 4,000 households, uh, within uh, the zip code, then you're in the purples. So the purples are the, the areas of worst need. Uh, and then finally, um, this is another one coming from state of California, something that uh, they're designating as opportunity zones. In other words, areas where there needs to be more opportunity for people. So these nine different layers, and so if we start turning on multiple layers at a time, you can start to see overlaps 
in different ways. And, um, and there's a variety of ways, of course, that this could be analyzed. And one way that we're gonna do it programmatically, it, you know, using uh, the GIS uh, system is to look for polygons, overlapping polygons, uh, because that's something you can just do via algorithms so that uh, the software can spit out areas where, uh, where uh, we have uh, more than one layer showing that a certain ge geography is, um, is of interest uh, to our analysis. And, and by doing it algorithmically, that has a little bit better standing than somebody going off of their gut feeling. But, but that's, only a, that's only a starter in terms of analyzing where do we want to designate officially as our areas of uh, most need being. Okay, that was a lot of talking. Uh, Bill, uh, I will again stop for a minute if you want to make any remarks and then open it up to any questions. One of the big takeaways of this is the issues that we're having with the digital divide is not just infrastructure, it, probably even more so it's, it's the people, it's the social element. And there's active conversations with CETF right now, um, an emerging technology fund about the three attributes for on the adoption side, uh, dealing with affordability, um, relevance, and literacy. And, and, and so the data that you've just seen really feeds into that. It's not that the broadband, the, the connections don't exist. It's just for one reason or another, we're not getting the adoption that we're looking for. And you know, for broadband for all, and and and, and so this really helps uh, highlight that and illustrate that. The other thing that's really interesting about all of this is, we we how do you find the priority areas? You know, we we really wanted to find to create a mechanism where data could cooperate data, where the survey says, and it's it's it, it's a coalescence of multiple surveys that all agree that yeah, yes, th this is the low hanging fruit. These are the priority areas first. This is where we really would get the, the, the biggest bang for the buck in the investment and, and, and be able to you know, show that, demonstrate that, talk to that in, in a substantive way. And, and this helps us do that. Questions or comments before we go any further about what you've seen? We're, we're moving pretty fast, but I, I think that there's a lot of information here and people may wanna reflect on it and think about it for a while. Okay. Uh, if there's no questions, Bill, I'll throw in a few more things uh, okay. before I wrap it up. Um, one thing about this tool, no, actually, before I say that, um, there is one more uh, data layer that I'll show, mm. which is the speed test results that we've gotten. Uh, Bill, you can talk about, I'll let you talk about the speed test tool. I will just show the tool results here. These results were pulled um, on Monday of this week. Do you want to explain uh, to the group what they mean? There's a vendor called GeoPartners that has a tool. We've been taking surveys um, in the, throughout the county of Santa Barbara of people of, I, I think we were going to, when we contracted with the partner with the tool, we were looking for about a thousand. Maria, what are we sitting at? About 3000 data points now in terms of the public support and the, the, the collection of data in the speed test area. Yeah, I just dropped the link in the map so everybody can look at it themselves. It's 3,156 total tests and 2,545 unique results. And it's just a tracker to see, you know, what's happening where and then where the gaps are tells us a different story. So um, it's interesting. I, so I just sent the link to the map um, so you can actually see for yourself. And we'll be expanding this map through San Luis and Ventura County as well for, um, again, the back end of the tool helps us identify potential routes that qualify for grant funding. Um, and the speed tests are part of the way that data is collected. So it actually is another grant tool that we're um, developing or utilizing. Have you so, had a chance to, ahead, Ryan? Have you had a chance to overlay these actual test speeds with the various layers that you just showed to see if there's overlap? I'm mean, looking at like Guadalupe, for example, I think was frequently flagged as an opportunity area. And then I'm not sure what community that is right in the middle. Um, Kind of halfway between what I right here. Um, 
northwest of there that's got a bunch of yellow and red bad test results. That's going to be Los Alamos. <laughs> yeah. I mean, does yeah. that jive with what you're seeing across the 10 or so layers that were shown? Um, not yet necessarily, but we do have another, we have a needs assessment um, that's doing a different, another different data analysis and then we'll kind of we'll be able to marry them a little bit um but part of the part of the hard part with the speed test is i mean it's it's, it's good information that to have but it doesn't it's not the definitive it's not the only thing that's helping us sort of cultivate where we have a need because you can go up into guadalupe and i'm looking at the map right now and i, I clicked on the link so anybody can scroll through the map and start looking at it you go up to guadalupe and you see some you know, decent speeds, but you, then you also all of a sudden notice they're from the university, they're like a CSU connection. Um, we're not sure why or what that is, or, you know, who's connecting through a CSU provider. So, you know, there's there's just different things, Brian. So we haven't, it hasn't totally correlated, but it does help us sort of, it does give us one snapshot or one lens with which to look at the county right now. Very interesting. We also get, uh question and that is when you have a speed test how can you if, if people don't have a computer how are they going to take the speed test you know and, and the part of the answer is we we what tim has here right now is just a dark layer because of the contrast of the colors and it's easy to identify but when you start putting the, la the layer that has rooftops on it you can see you know areas <clears throat> neighborhoods and blocks that perhaps you know we know they exist and there's no data, you know, and so all of a sudden at that point in time, we can, as we, we drill down and get down into communities and, and in the neighborhoods, you can see that w w w if there's a hunch in Los Alamos case that, uh, that there is no connectivity in certain portions of that town, we, we can validate that and, and, and look in the neighboring areas as well. And we, we can get a pretty good understanding of where it does and actually does not exist. And, and so the rooftops can tell us a lot as, as you start looking at data points within the background of the community and overall. The other interesting thing about the speed test tool, and again, is it also shows us all the ways that people are connecting, not via the tech, via the actual computer or cell phone. And it, we actually can see whether it's a computer or cell phone when you do a, a look at it. But you look, what amazed me is a, the 70 plus different ways people are connecting. So some of them are only one person, but providers, you know, I've never even heard of, you know, so people are really connecting in a lot of different ways. Um, and that's that's interesting as well. Yeah, I'm looking here uh, to, to that point, uh, Maria. Um, I just did a query on some of the speed desk data in the present view. And you, even though I was just looking at uh, the absolute speed so I could apply a color scheme to something, there is all this other data that's been gathered by the tool uh, that you see here by the survey tool, that is. Uh, Bill, the last thing I want to say uh, in my portion of uh, today's call is uh, about uh, this GIS tool in general, uh, which is that um, there's other, you know, there's lots of other uh, GIS tools out there in the world um, being used for broadband projects and other projects. And, but typically, uh, these are tools that are being administered by some person and, and a single individual is deciding what goes into uh, the map and how it's going to look and what the tool is going to do for you. And, <laughs> and you have this um, single person or single entity that's um, acting as uh, the gatekeeper. Uh, but uh, the nature of this particular tool um, also allows um, anybody that is um, a participant of uh, the broadband consortium to have their own account in the tool with an account you can upload your own data to your own data library you can develop your own data sets like if you're a city but a municipality let, let's just say right you could put your own data sets into an online library and develop those data sets into one or more maps and then you can share those maps with the public at large or only select individuals or if um, somebody doesn't want your map per se, your finished product, but rather it wants your raw data, you can share raw data as well. And so 
what we can, what this allows, in other words, is that um, the different uh, members of uh, the consortium, as we go forward here, can do not have to submit data that they want to have included in a general analysis to me as uh, the guy doing GIS support for the broadband consortium uh, and give up control of that data because you just gave me a copy of your stuff, but rather you can put your own data into your own library and then control how much it is shared and track how it's being used by other parties. And if at the end of uh, this project, if you want to take uh, permission away or even delete your data from the online library, uh, you can do so. So it allows really multiple players to have a more direct hand in, in sharing and collaborating with uh, GIS data. Exclusive use of your own data securely. There you go, there. That's what I was trying to say, and I just needed 10 <laughs> minutes to say it. Thank you, Bill. George, your hand up. Uh, thank you. I had a nice little chuckle for that last comment, and thanks for sharing all this information. It's actually, really nice to see um, these overlays and also the speed data and how it reflects perhaps some of the upcoming grant opportunities and justifying some of those submissions. So my question is uh, twofold. One, is this just within San Luis Obispo County uh, Santa Barbara County? Is it available in Ventura County? And two, how did you collect and aggregate these speed test data from these individual subscribers or users? You're, you're leading the witness here, George. <laughs> uh, the answer is yes, it's, it's, today it's available for Santa Barbara County, but uh, with the grant that we've gotten from the California Emerging Technology Fund, we will be rolling out. We just signed an agreement this week to expand beyond for the two counties, south and north. And we're over the next three months, we're moving this to a, be a tri-county tool. It'll, it, all of the data that's available in, in uh, Santa Barbara County will be replicated to the other two counties, that, those data types as well, and it'll be a three-county tool. Oh, it's great. And, yeah. you know, I heard the comment, and I'm just seeking some clarification on this. Yeah. The survey, the survey was the collection mechanism to run the speed test from individual respondents, or so, was there a mechanism? There's a special mechanism, and I'll drop that in the chat. It's actually, you could take the speed test from wherever you are. It might not show up okay. if there's no, if there's no, um, the speed test can be taken from anywhere. We, we did a needs assessment survey uh, as well. So uh, you can see what the, uh, you can see what the, um, you go, just go through the broad, the, we embedded it within our website, the consortium website, um, you, and it can be totally anonymous. You don't have to enter an address because there's privacy issues. It's gonna move that dot. It's not gonna show us exactly where you are. Um, it does that on the back end. Um, but then it just, it, it basically uses MLAB. It's very, it's the, you're basically logging into MLAB, which is standard as well. Um, and it just does a measures and up down speed. Okay, so if I understand this correctly, if somebody goes to that PC broadband link, mm -hmm. runs the speed test, the Pacific Coast Broadband Consortium will get the results of that speed test and have the ability to report it automatically into this tool. Correct. Is that correct? So what, right. Well, we can go into the back end and upload the data. But again, the, the previous link that I dropped in, anybody can see the speed test and the results. You can click on the map and you can click on any dot and you can see the provider and you can see the speed. Uh, and I appreciate that. I'm thinking yeah. a little more deeper about this mm -hmm. because, Bill, you know, we've seen that surveys have been presented through these discussions previously by Magellan with some of the work they've done, but I don't believe the speed test was a component of generating that data. And that data is very useful within these application processes. 
Really and that's, exa that's exactly why we did yeah. it, George. We did it because the feds and the states are saying minimum speeds of 100 up, 100 down are what you need to plan for when you're applying for funding. So we just know right off the bat. Well, we, if we don't really know and we know that like FCC hasn't finished updating their maps or someone else hasn't finished updating their maps or you know everybody's got their own or it's a self-report. So we just thought it would be really helpful. And this company has several statewide contracts on the East Coast and one with, I believe it's this Washington and then Sonoma County also uses this company. It's strictly for us to be able to identify sort of how do we make the best case scenario when we're running a grant application? <laughs> right. You got to validate. So I guess the question I have, Bill, as a follow up is will the broadband consortium be going out to each municipality and say, hey, we'd like you to run these in community surveys and gather more information. Yes, we will. That's fantastic. That is our true advancement of the resources from this group and your efforts. It's and yours as well, Maria. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Jeff, you've been waiting patiently. Yes, thank you. I was just I was just wondering, is there a, a way to control um, or account for, I should say, the method that the speed test is taking. For example, in my house, I have a uh, certainly have a router and I have a PC that's hardwired connected, but I also have a wireless uh, network in my house. If I take the speed test three times, you know, with my phone, with my PC, and with my, you know, with my iPad or something, there's going to be three different speeds. Uh, with the real speed. I mean, the speed for these purposes would be the hard line, the one that I'm wired into, and not necessarily how good my wireless uh, network might be. So is there, is there a way to control for that, or, or are we just going to aggregate all the various speeds uh, all together? If you can you understand my, my question, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it, it, all it does, it, all it can really show us at this time is whether it was a fixed or a cellular right right and that's that's all we can see really it, you can't really do because it's it, because again that list of how people are connecting it's right you know some people are only using a cellular device we do ask that people use a pc if they have it just because that tends to be a little more you know potentially consistent but at the same right. time the data is data it's still even if I, you gave us three different speeds that's okay like uh -huh. we're okay. still gonna because it will aggregate um, again, on the back end, it will show sort of a general, it'll show the service providers who's providing the service, it'll show the services available, it'll show, you know, there's a lot of other things on that back end that we can see that, again, tells us a little bit more about the story about a community or an area. All right, certainly, certainly more data is better. I, I just wanted to um, point out that, you know, in my house, I could give you three different speeds, right? And, right. and, and there's it, gonna be a really fast one because I'm wired, you know, wired connected and there's gonna be a really slow one because I have an old cell phone or something right. that's connected to my wireless. And that's okay, you know, and we're gonna yeah. also be able to see, be able to hopefully correlate a little bit between the need, the actual needs assessment survey that people took. And we had over 2000 responses from that as well. And some right. of that'll be sorted. And we ask about the ways people are connecting and how many devices they do have in a household. So we're going to be able to see that that is a factor as well. Terrific. Thank you. Maria, this is probably a really good time for you to talk about your UCSB resources. You, you know, the people helping you do all the analysis yes. of speed test data. Yeah, because that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I can come up with a really good idea of what I want to find out, but I don't really know actually then I get it. It's like, oh, I need help with this. So what's really exciting is right now, um, I'm working with a PhD candidate student out of um, so the social science communications department in, with some background in his, she's working under a major professor who has a, a lot of interest in, in digital equity and inclusion. And she's her candidate student. She's actually doing all of our needs assessment data analysis. And so we'll have a first run next week. Um, we just kind of finished what the questions are that we're asking the data. Again, trying to align it with broadband for all, speed, accessibility, affordability. So she's sort of asked, you know, some of the questions that are becoming irrelevant, but that's okay. We'll still have some extra fun graphs to look at. So 
so the students taking a look at all that um, and then we'll be able to incorporate hopefully be able to cross reference the other fun piece is um working with another professor out of um, the Department of Engineering. And she's she's a computer, more of a computer design, technology design professor. And she's working with some students on the, a, a different back end. And we're not sure if this is gonna be incorporated into the strategy or not, but looking at um, services provided to households and really take a look at that affordability piece. Um, she has a big interest in affordability. She serves on a national board I always forget the name of it, but it's a big Marconi. national Marconi. She sits on the Marconi board. And so she's got a real interest in some data. So it's there's been some really fun collaboration with UCSB and some of this data collection and analysis that we're doing so we can get a really accurate snapshot um, when we're talking about um, digital inclusion and digital equity, which is where there's a lot of our work is going to be around the people. So I'm looking at the people stuff. Any comments before we move on? Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Maria. We're making some great progress here. And so wanted to be able to share that with everybody. Okay, so Tim, why don't we unshare your screen and we'll get back to the agenda and move forward to the next topic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to unshare me, Bill? I'm looking for the control for that. I think I can. Do we just, do we just? Yep, I think you can now see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go through real quickly, uh, just the, the last slide or two, and then we're going to be at our round table. Um, things are popping. You know, not on this list is the NTIA grant, which we got the announcement from yesterday, CPUC. Um, the adoption, uh, we're going to be sitting on a webinar this afternoon looking at the adoption account that it's got a very short fuse. Uh, and so we're going to be seeing if we can be matching some local resources to adoption funding uh, shortly. Public housing is available. The broadband consortia, if you haven't sent a letter of support yet, please do. We're gathering letters. And thank you, Brian, for your letter and Greg and others. We're putting our proposal together and, and your letters are all very helpful. Um, we'll be, the due date is July 15th, so we're going to try to be wrapped up a, a week before that just so we can have some breathing room and move on and get back to the Santa Barbara strategy and the work we're doing there, but it's, it's happening. The local area te technical assistance grants, Jory mentioned, and uh, I think the, the application release will be, is imminent as well as uh, significant funding for the last mile. We're, we're having a lot of conversations about that. Uh, for Ventura County alone, we're looking at 20 million for 9,365 unserved area, uh, residences, facilities, buildings, whatever. That's the number that the CPUC believes is in Ventura County, and that's the amount of money that's been earmarked for us at this point. What we have to do is come up with a game plan on how to approach it and make sure that we meet all the criteria of receiving those funds for that conversation in that particular space. So collectively between the three counties, it's about three times that much. The, the counties are pretty similar. When you look at San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara, I think we're looking at about 60 million out of the billion that was set aside for rural areas that uh, will be heading our direction for the last mile discussion. So. And the timeline that CPUC is talking about is uh, imminent. It, 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 it's really fairly quickly. I, I, I am thinking it might be maybe later in the summer, early fall, but we'll see. I was surprised the last couple of weeks. And so things are moving pretty fast and it's pretty exciting. And don't hold me to it. It could be much sooner and as advertised. So any other discussions about funding? It's in the, yes, Maria. Announcing that we'll be having a webinar on funding. <laughs> Thanks That's to Megan. Um, in September, um, we'll, we'll send out a save the date here shortly, but in September, I believe it's the 14th. Um, it's a Wednesday, 9 a.m. Megan's going to be walk, will sort of help us walk through the landscape um, of the grant, broadband grant landscape, and then sort of this a little more about getting ready. So um, we'll have to spend an hour together and 
we'll start there, but we definitely want to help everyone prepare public sector and other staff get prepared for grant funding and really understand what's going on. So appreciate, um, we'll, but we will send out a save the date soon. I, I, I will pause for a moment and just say that Megan is a rare talent. She, she even though she's in Washington, D.C., she hails from California and is coming back to the West Coast. And so she uh, has started to work with uh, Magellan and the County of Ventura in the South. And as we work on the tri-county areas, everything that's happening by one area, we want to leverage to the other two areas. And so we thought it was very, very important to, to not duplicate efforts, but try to leverage efforts in, in a very constructive way. And so uh, we we really wanted to not only have Ventura County rely on her expertise in broadband specifically uh, as a resource in the South, but uh, consortial wide. And so we're, we're thrilled to death. One of the things that I mentioned to her, I, you know, you know, when I did, it was earlier this week, I was thinking about Tim in the back of my mind, the GIS perspective, and that is getting to a point with the GIS discussion, if we could have certain attributes for certain data for, from the grants and the, and the funding sources and have overlays, where all of a sudden you have communities and you can see which portions of the community start qualifying for the various grants that are out there. All of a sudden you have a third leg of the stool. You saw the fiber maps, you saw the qualification areas in, in the challenging, but you, then you have the, the, the positive side of that would be the opportunity layers. And you'd be able to, to pull up your communities and be able to start seeing which areas would qualify for what grants. And, and the power of a tool like that would be phenomenal for municipalities to take full advantage of. And, and so that's a conversation that we're just gonna kick off, gonna explore a little bit, see, as we start racking and stacking these opportunities, how can we create this tool where all of a sudden they become self-evident? Use these funds to do these things in these areas. So previews of coming attractions. Moving forward, I already mentioned, I, Julie and I were talking about Nyland Acres and the network that was there was gonna, just touch on that, uh, but she was here and I'm glad that we were able to talk about it earlier. So we've covered this particular topic and uh, Nyland, uh, Nyland Promise is the name of the 501c3 that's been established as a uh, catalyst uh, not-for-profit to work with the school districts to be able to connect those students. Um, and with that, we're got 15 minutes left to that if I can turn back to you and, and any topics that you want to discuss, issues, things that we haven't covered that we should be covering. Uh, the agenda is now yours in terms of the round table. I wanted to also suggest that because we are doing an awful lot of work and it is summertime and people are on vacation and those kinds of things, kind of putting next meeting in 30 days in in the tentative status. If if it's if we if if it if there's a specific urgent agenda, we'll certainly do it. Uh, we're going to certainly leave it available for certain kinds of webinars, or we may go dark, you know, just depending on how busy everybody is and, and all the things that are going on. So uh, keep it, uh, we typically meet the third Thursday, um, but keep it tentative for this next month. Uh, and we'll, we'll confirm it as we, get, as, as we get beyond the 4th of July holiday. Any other topics that we'd bring up? Brian, how is the state of Moore Park and your initiatives? Yeah, I mean, we have less exciting stuff to do because we have concluded that our geography is not correct for what is ailing us. So we are basically joining the Ventura County effort and they get to talk about all the cool things and we help out in the background. Um, and then also the other one for us to go forward with our actual physical projects are also could be triggered by the state coming through. Um, so they are, have now produced three maps. The first map did not go through where we needed to in more part, or probably it did go. Then they realized they drew up something that was very expensive and they published a second map that did not go through more part. And then they found out in May that they had a hundred billion dollars with a B laying around and what a difference a hundred billion makes. And they have now released a third map that restored uh, where we want to go. So that pendulum is swinging back and forth, but we've been through state budget negotiation drama before. So we're just kind of sitting and waiting to see where it ends up. 
and we'll go forward with hopefully both the county and state projects or filling that at least one. Yeah. I'm really kind of excited about the middle mile discussion, you know, not only with the funds that are arriving, but uh, I've, I've, in the last 48 hours, there's been two or three efforts of outreach at the, at the, at the very, at the county levels with, between Caltrans, Office of Technology, Golden State Network, we, and then this morning you know, to the Chumash tribe, you know, it, it's, everybody's talking to everybody. You know, I, I'm really bullish that we're going to get this right. And, and so I'm, I'm kind of excited about how the conversations have evolved and matured. And now we're getting the right people in the room in a meaningful way. And that's all good. That's all good. So it's, 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 uh, it's good to see. Any other discussions, any other topics? Going once? Going twice, I would just want to yeah, just quickly. There, sure. there was a grant I recall that was for municipal funding to do investigative work or discovery work, et cetera. Is a five hundred thousand dollar grant from the state of California? You're talking about LADA, the local agency technical assistance, was five hundred. Yeah, that's that is the one. Believe. Yeah, that was that, that was on the list. Has that already? past its due date or is it coming up in July? Coming up. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll take this opportunity to thank everybody and we'll look forward to staying connected and uh, at any point in time, if you got feedback for us, don't hesitate to drop us an email. Thanks everybody. With that, meeting adjourned. Thank you so much. Have thank a great you, Bill. rest of the week. Bill, can we talk offline? Sure. All right.